Can everyone trust the police? Well, I think, <laughs> I think we could trust them more if there were guns, you know? Okay. Yeah, maybe um, ban women from the police force. Hello and welcome to Women Unfiltered, where each week we bring you frank and honest debate, all from a female perspective. On the show today, ally or enemy, we're discussing whether women in Britain can ever trust the police again. And we ask, should abortion be a criminal issue? This comes after a woman was jailed for inducing an abortion after the legal time limit. As always, we'll be filling in the blanks of some of this week's trending news headlines. And later, your questions will be answered. Now, joining me today are three fierce females. Agony Aunt and Advice Editor at The Sun, Sally Land. Thank you. Former Chief Superintendent, Palm Sandu. And YouTuber and content creator, Pearl Davis. But now, buckle up, because this is Women Unfiltered. First up, faith in the police has been rapidly declining since the murder of Sarah Everard in March of 2021, and more recently, the horrific case of serial rapist David Carrick. This prompted Met Commissioner Sir Mark Rowley to reveal that the force is currently investigating 1,000 sexual and domestic abuse claims involving about 800 of its officers. A recent YouGov stat showed that under half of women in the UK trust the police. Sally, it's clear then from that stat that women don't actually feel safe with the police. Why do you think that is? Well, I think the, the headlines that you've just referenced within the last two to three years have been utterly devastating. So it's no surprise that confidence in the police has been dented. I think we're in a very bad situation at the moment because the police themselves aren't admitting that there's a problem and we've all heard the comments from the Commissioner Mark Rowley where he's, um, there's been a, a recent report which is done by Dame Louise Casey and she's pointed out the failings of policing but they're not accepting they've got a problem so how do you find a solution and so for, for me the first step is admit there's a problem find the solution and then through that women themselves will start feeling safer and trust the police more. I'm curious, there's a thousand assault claims, you said? Yeah. Okay, and how many police officers are there? I, I don't know, I'm not from the US. So. I mean, this is, this is covering 800 officers for those thousand accusations. Okay, because so I just think number. there's a difference between like accusations and convictions. Right, so, okay. Yeah. There's about 33,000 police officers in London and that mm -hmm. thousand is part of that 33,000. Oh, so it's at one? Yeah, so those are the ones so in like London. So that's less than like, what, 2%? But that's 2% too many. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, 2 small. Yeah, 2% too many. But it's, it's I like, mean, but it's like, it's like if 1% of women do something, am I gonna blame all of women? Okay. Like if 2% of women, like does that, does that include me now? And I just think that we're kind of going to dangerous territory if we're gonna say 2% of a whole entire population, you're gonna make that generalization about all of them. I would say that you, know, you, ha you I mean, have to are... be able to trust the police. That mm -hmm. is the cornerstone of justice in our society, to, be, to have that faith, not just for women, for, mm -hmm. for gay people, for, for people, black people, Asian people. Mm -hmm. the, the report said that there's a problem with misogyny, homophobia. Women feel safe, and whether they have a responsibility to make themselves feel safer, it's actually for, for police to give them that okay, but how? confidence. How? Like, because a lot of times it's like, like how, how do you do that? I mean, I'm American, I'd give them, <laughs> we have different solutions there, but, but how? If I could jump in there, mm -hmm. because the issue there is, if, even if you've only got 1% of officers who are domestic violence abusers, mm -hmm. that's 1% too well, much. Well, that's accusations, right? And, that's, and we kind of get into a dangerous territory when we, when we start treating an accusation like a criminal offense. Yeah. And you're absolutely right, and the, mm -hmm. the majority of police officers are good, hard-working individuals, and they're there for the right reason. Right. But those individuals are in a p position of trust. So when you've got a member of the public, is that member of the public going to call the police officer who himself is a domestic violence abuser? And that's where the danger is. But it's not solely a problem about about that, you know, some police officers, it's also, I know you've spoken about this, female officers within the force don't feel that they can always talk, speak out against male colleagues because they're worried about the impact on them. And is that a serious and problem? Absolutely, and that is probably the second step. Mm -hmm. Where you're talking about what should we do about mm -hmm. it, the second step is to create a safe environment so that serving officers, whether they're male or female, can speak up and make their voice heard. I think, again, 
accusations does not equal guilt. And you get into a, you know, a tricky place where we're saying, oh, the, the people accusing them should just be heard. Well, they should be heard if there's evidence and they can prove it. I don't think anyone here would disagree with what you're saying. An accusation is not the same as a conviction. However, if you have such high levels of misogyny, um, racism. Misogyny, like what, what high levels of, like, we need to define it, right? Because a lot of times we throw around these terms and it's like, what? What, what is misogyny? What does that mean? Because I thought I it was the hatred of women and I don't see police officers left and right. You know, I've, I've been in here, the UK, a year and a half. I, I don't see them openly hating women. Well, I think the bigger, the bigger picture here is that people have lost trust in the police, whether they're accusations or convictions. Mm -hmm. Women have lost trust in the police. There was discussion around the time of this tragic case that men should take some of the responsibility for women feeling safe and that they should have, uh, it was discussion at the time that men should perhaps stay indoors at certain times so that women could feel confident. That is the most sexist policy I have ever heard. That is open sexism. That is open, like you're gonna tell all of men they can't go out after 11 p.m. And some men were willing to do that and other people were up in arms. It was a really interesting yeah, conversation. Yeah, I, I think that's time. a really sexist policy. I think if, yeah, this is why I think guns are really important. I'm American, yeah. So, yeah, so. <laughs> Controversial. Yeah, like again, you know, if you're walking home alone at night and you have a gun, you'd feel a lot safer. I personally would. As someone that gets, you know, I get death threats all the time. I, I wish I was in a country where yeah, I could, I could have guns and the right to bear arms. I'm not going too much on a tangent, but we have a real yes. knife crime problem here. I don't know if we necessarily want to add an additional issue into the mix, but let's move on. Now, a mother of three received a 28-month sentence for taking abortion pills at home after the legal limit. 44-year-old Carla Foster received the medication via the Pills by Post scheme, introduced in lockdown, but wasn't honest about how far along her pregnancy was at the time of her consultation. Now, Sally, can I bring you in here? What do you think of this case and her sentencing? I don't think there's any woman who chooses to have an abortion lightly, and I certainly see it in my email box every single week. The the tortured decision-making that women do go through when they decide to have an abortion, and in some cases not. This, this mum, mum of three, <laughs> will, will have made an absolutely horrific decision, and I, I don't think prison is the place for her. She, she has flashbacks, she is traumatised, she has depression, she is haunted by the face of her dead daughter's yeah. Um, face every single day, I think she knows she made a mistake. A custodial sentence is not the answer. Mm -hmm. And Palm, this, you know, is going back to a law that was created in 1861. Do you think it's right that we're still using it today? I think the whole situation is really complex and it is particularly horrendous. Um, and what we've got to remember is why do people get sent to, pl uh, to prison? Number one, it's to, so that they're not a danger to the public. Number two is to re rehabilitate them. Now, is this woman going to go to prison? Is she a danger to the public? Or is she going to be rehabilitated in prison? I don't think she's going to fit either of those categories. How far along was she? Between 32 and 34 weeks. OK, so that's like seven months? Eight. eight months. That's eight months? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so disgusting. That's literally disgusting. Um, yeah, I mean, there's babies that have survived at six months, like six and a half. So I actually think that's gross. And yeah, she should go to jail for that. But what do you think about Eight months? women's like, rights? That's crazy. But what do you think this represents for women's rights, this decision that she's gone to prison for this? What do you think that's done for women's rights and the autonomy to our own bodies? Um, I think, yeah, I mean, you have the right to do what you want with your body, but not to someone else's body. And that, that's a full grown child, especially at eight months. Can you imagine if someone, if, if that baby was born early and they threw an eight-month-old baby off of, a, off of a bridge, something like that? Everyone would be, there would be an uproar. There would be an absolute uproar. But for some reason, she has no consequences for taking an abortion pill at eight months. I don't, I don't think there should be no consequences. In our country, abortion is legal to Up the to upper six, limit of right? 24 yeah. weeks. Mm -hmm. I think you know, whether or not that should be lowered or hired is a matter for the democratic process. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with what she did. Mm -hmm. However, I 
cannot understand what is going to be gained by sending her to prison. She has three sons, one of whom has special needs. Mm -hmm. How are those children going to benefit from their mother being in prison for over a year? Uh, because again, if you if you let her do that, then other women will see that and do the same thing. I think we have laws for a reason. So I, I don't think it's like, oh, I can just break the law and have no consequence. You broke the law. Like. I don't think anybody's saying it's right. Well, we're not saying it's right or wrong, uh, or I should say that's my view on it. What we're saying is the punishment, does the punishment fit what she's done? Yes. That's, but that's the more the and question. It, but the punishment, yes. the, the reason that people are sent to prison mm -hmm. is for rehabilitation or mm -hmm. because they're, they're a danger to the public. Now, this woman isn't going to go and attack other women and cause abortions, is she? And in, in addition to that, if I may, I've held the hand of many, many rape victims, many victims of incest who make that difficult decision. It's never somebody else's decision, it's that individual's decision for whatever reason. So taking away the right to abortions or the right to do that to your body, it's a big it's a really complex area and it's something that you've got to tread really lightly. But eight months, you don't think that should be legal for them to We're get abortions up to eight months? It's not about the legality because... No, I'm, I'm just asking you personally. You don't think up to eight months it should be legal? All I'm saying is that when they abort, abort a baby at seven or eight weeks, it's flushed down the toilet. Now, she's a, a mother. She knew that a baby that was already eight months, she's not going to flush that down the toilet. She wasn't thinking straight. Her head is a mess. Mm -hmm. Now, if she's mentally or emotionally unstable, what good is it to send her to prison? I think it, it shows women you can't do that. Because if you, may, if, you, if you don't have her go to prison, then other women are going to do the same you're thing. Never going to get your, you're never going to end up eight months pregnant considering taking illegal pills in terms of you should have taken before 10, 10 weeks unless you are in an absolutely horrendous situation, unless Wrong. you have been That's raped, unless That's you are correct. in a domestic violence situation. 99.5, like I'm just correcting you because I, I, this isn't correct. 99.5% of abortions are elective. I've looked up the stats here, it's not true. The majority are literally elective. It's like 0.05% that are um, because of what you're mentioning. What do you mean by elective? Elective as in they don't have a reason. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm going to disagree with that know. figure. Would, I'm going to disagree with that figure. Because I've I know it's self-reported. It's self-reported. It's no, self but it's all I'm going to say is that, you know, I know that having dealt with rape and it's incest, point, no, but I'm saying those it's women, technically, yeah. that would be considered an elective um, abortion. No, they, that, there's a box. They can click it. But if you've been yeah. raped, you elect to have an abortion. Yeah. Or if you've no, been the victim of incest, it's considered an elective abortion. You, you choose yeah. to have no it's no it's not it says rape on it it's rape but also incest, if you're just yeah. discussing on a personal level ticking a box doesn't really necessarily mean anything about someone's experience why they're there i think the, the bigger picture which we, well, should we maybe believe women that's what they said they, they said why they got the abortion I thought, don't we believe women here but i don't think anyone's <laughs> questioning that this is mm -hmm. this is such an unusual case and it, in fact it's 0.1 percent of abortions happen after 24 weeks. Mm -hmm. this, on that basis alone, this is so unusual. The vast majority mm -hmm. in this country happen before 10 weeks. And in any case, no, no woman just goes, oh, do you know, I'm, I'm not gonna take my contraception pill. I'm, at, I'm just gonna go for an abortion because it's just easier. Right, but this is all based on stories and what they're saying. Oh, you have to believe people because if somebody comes to me and says, I've been raped, I have to give, I have to believe them. I can't say, I don't believe you. Why would I just openly believe women? I think it's very dangerous ter territory to start saying that we shouldn't women believe women who have either been raped or have been victims but, of incest. No, that have no women. evidence. Should we believe of men when they've gone through something? If they're victims of it's sexual assault, it's not a gender issue. No, no, it's you need. should believe people. Yes, if they absolutely. No, I think you need evidence at the end of the day because I think we're in a dangerous territory when we just openly believe. Like you can completely defame someone's reputation off of what a story. No, you need evidence. If that was your son, you wouldn't want them to do that. Well, this lady wasn't accusing anyone. Mm -hmm. She was asking for help, and I don't think you ask for help unless you are in trouble, unless you have a serious problem on your hands.
Now, this is the part of the show where we take a look at some of the week's headlines circling our debate and we try to fill in the blanks. So, kicking off with the first one. The <laughs> awarded a counselling contract to a group set up to stop abortions. I'm going to go BBC. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm thinking government or NHS. Yes. Oh, oh. Boom, you're right. Oh, I was going okay. to add the BBC because that's the only one I know. <laughs> I, I think it needs to be completely unbiased. And yep. I don't think essentially the NHS should be getting involved in what is a highly politicised issue. Can we agree like less abortions is better for women? No. Like women, didn't you just say all the trauma women go through when they get an abortion? Do you think like this is mentally like good for women? The trauma that women go through making that decision. Yeah. So wouldn't it be better? Having an abortion. Wouldn't it be better if we had less unplanned pregnancies, less abortions? I think that's a huge leap to go from one to the other. Okay. And so I, it's abortions are good for the mental health of women. I. There I are think situations where the the where things happen to women, and abortion is the only option sometimes. Should biologically male police officers be able to <laughs> women? Um, Search. <laughs> Pearl, what do you think it is? Search, that's a good guess. <laughs> yeah, Tinkers. times three. <laughs> okay, it's strip search. Okay. Sally, what do you make of Biologically that? male. male. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Palm. Um, not as a norm. However, if there's a dangerous situation, it may have to happen. Right. For example, if uh, a woman's secreted a knife about her body somewhere or um, something that's going to harm her and others, there may be, you know, one in a million chance that that needs to happen, but normally no. All right, lastly, new Wayne Cousins will explore culture of misogyny in police. Review. I'm going to take her as a review. <laughs> yeah, in investigation. Well, the answer is documentary. Okay. So do you think we need a documentary on, on this? I think, I think we, we need to reflect more and, and learn more from the mistakes made. Okay. Definitely. I think it would be really interesting. There's a lot of public interest in it at the moment. And also, it will dispel, dispel the myth that the police above are above the law which is what Wayne Cousins said, which is what Carrick said, that even if they were reported, because they were police officers, that they'd get away with it. You've been sending us your questions ahead of this week's show. We're going to do our best to answer one of them now. Elizabeth asks, can any of us trust the police service? It's failing everyone, not just women, but what's the alternative? Pearl. Can everyone trust the police? Well, I think, <laughs> I think we could trust them more if there were guns, you know. Okay. Yes. Yeah, maybe um, ban women from the police force. Okay. Yes. What, what would that yeah. achieve? I would feel a lot safer, to be honest. Like, I'm just thinking, all right, if I'm in my apartment and someone's breaking in, and now I'm on my last, like, I'm so scared, I'm hiding, it's a man, like, how am I going to be protected? And I call, you, you used to be a police officer, you come in, what is she going to do? Like, that I couldn't do. So, so what, if, what if it was a, a different crime? What if, God forbid, you were I would victim of some sort of assault? I would prefer, uh, if I was being assaulted, no, a, a man to save were, me. If you were reporting something after the incident had happened, would you still want a male officer to yeah. be holding your hand if you've gone through something but incredibly I mean, traumatic? Yeah, I mean, maybe in the... Look, I don't have a problem with them doing the like non-combat like stuff, but I'm just saying I would feel safer if when I called I knew a guy was coming. I have been to so many assaults, so many um, issues, fights and everything. Mm -hmm. The women can talk their way out of situations, they can calm, they can diffuse. Do you really want police officers to turn up to shoot people, to batter them with their batons or to kick them in? No, you want them to diffuse the situation. And I used to have that attitude like 20, 30 years ago where people would turn around and say, I want a man or I want a white person or I want somebody from this sexual persuasion. I just want that someone, is just so I, just want, I want someone stronger I'm than really me. I'm really glad that we haven't got I the American just, style. I, I don't really know where to begin with that. Yeah. I feel like I've gone to the dark ages. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, not, it's not just about physical strengths. Mm -hmm. 
It is if both, someone's both attacking gender, you. But both if someone's genders. Atta- oh my gosh. If someone's attacking you, you don't think it's about physical strength. But there's so much more that the police have to deal with. Police officers than, don't just roll around physical on physical assault. A lot of what the police officers are dealing with now is mental health fallout. Why can't women help victims with mental health issues isn't just that, as well as men? One, isn't that what therapists are for? Like, what are they? <laughs> I certainly don't think... <laughs> making all police officers male would help the situation at all, especially when we're talking about the fact that women currently don't have faith in the police force. That's all we've got time for today. My thanks to Sally, Palm and Pearl. Don't forget to like, subscribe and let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on this debate, whether you agree, disagree with any of us. And we'll see you next time for more Women Unfiltered.